Okay, so by now we all know we should have a savings account, but how are you maximizing that account? The problem is, are we willing to look into the mirror and say, hey, we need to do this and get rid of that for a season? This person who, who is financially well off was willing to sacrifice things for 12 months to change the next 12 years of their life. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a few of the best high yield savings accounts on the market. Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. So right now everyone is, you know, kind of like concerned about the high inflation and then everyone's talking about the most recent bank that just absolutely just unfortunately had an epic fall, right? Um, and I've been getting a lot of questions, a lot of uh, uh, DMs, text messages saying, hey, yo, should I move my money? Where should I park my money? And here, I want to start this off by saying this, man. Um, listen, you should always park your money, whether that's your checking account, your savings account, into an account that has FDIC insured. And what is that amount? And so the average amount that is covered by the FDIC is $250,000. And so what I really want to say is like, hey, if you have $500,000 in an account that's only insured, straight up $250,000, you are making a bad decision. You should have multiple bank accounts and make sure all of your money is insured, right? But for the average person watching this video, you don't have $300,000 sitting in a savings account. You may have $300,000 invested, but some of you all have been asking me, hey, Anthony, where should I park my savings account right now? Um, and that's a good question. I want to start off by saying this. The average savings account in the U.S. has an interest rate of 0.35 APY. Um, APY simply means your annual percentage per year, right? Uh, but this type of savings account um, has a big impact on interest rates. So right now we're seeing that the average bank account, the average savings account in America is 0.35. Why is it 0.35? Well, these are your uh, Bank of America. These are your big branches that are, are local in your branch. They're giving you 0.35%. But you guys, there are bank accounts out there that are high yielded savings account that are pretty much majority online that are offering anywhere from, from 3% all the way up to 5% when it comes to an APY. And so I really wanted to just give you all five banks, five banks uh, that is absolutely amazing that you, that you should consider. And I'm, I'm going to give you the bank that I have my money currently parked at. I'm going to start off by saying that, you know, previously, uh, you all knew that I was um, uh, supporting a prize pool and it's still a great bank, but uh, we are no longer partnering with prize pool because their savings account is, um, uh, their APY is actually uh, not the best. A great bank, they're giving away great prizes, uh, but I needed something that if I put my money in there, um, I can see instantly um, a certain kind of money. So for example, I moved $25,000 into one of my banks and um, man, within one month, right at about $80 was deposited into my account for money just sitting there. Now that's not like a whole lot of money. It's not, but it's a whole lot of money for my money just sitting there because I put $25,000 in that account. I have another like $60,000, $70,000, $75,000 sitting in this other savings account. And within the same time frame, that account made $8. My $25,000 made what? $80. Do the math. What makes sense? So, y'all, I moved all, I mean, I moved that whole, I moved the rest of that money over here. So, I want to give you uh, some accounts I really want you to to look into. I mean, I want to, I want to start off with the very first one. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good one. Capital One. Capital One, their API um, as of the month of March is at 3.4%. Uh, 3.4%. Now, their minimum balance for this API is $0. So, every account that I'm going to give you today, there is, there's no limit, you know, as far as, and there's no bare minimum of what you have to deposit. So if you have $500, I'm going to put that $500 into uh, these accounts, which, whichever one you choose. I'm going to give you five of them. Uh, the lowest one today is going to be a 3.4%. We're going to get all the way up to 4.45%. And these are accounts that are all FDIC insured. I've vetted all of them. These are all great accounts. And it's really upon your preference, right? Uh, so Capital One is a great one. They are FDIC. I see insured. They are offering a 3.4% interest rate. Uh, there is a bare minimum of what you need to deposit to get inside of it. Um, I'm even clicking on their website now to see what, what are some of their benefits. Um, okay, here's a good one. No fees, no monthly or maintenance fees. Uh, what you earn is what you keep. 
that's a good thing. So it's another good thing of what you really need to make sure that you're getting. Some of you all may say, some banks may say, hey, we're going to give you a no, no minimum uh, to keep it balanced, but we're going to charge you $15 a month for this account. Well, you want to go with the ones that have no fees. So uh, this Capital One right here, 3.4% uh, APY, again, for the savings rate as of the month of March, uh, no fees. Uh, you get to keep what you keep. Uh, you get to keep what you put in, no minimum payment. It, they also do come with an, an actual app. And this is very, very good. And you can also have multiple accounts. So the very first one here is Capital One at a 3.4% interest rate, zero balance, move it over there. Drop in the comments and let me know if you already have a Capital One um, high yielded savings account. Ashley as well, let me know in the comments if you have a high yielded savings account. And also let me know if, if your bank is not on here, right? Because I want to help us help a lot of people. And if you know of some other great banks that are offering even higher interest rates, they're FDIC insured, yo, let us know. Now, before we get to the number two, um, what I want to give you this, this suggestion when it comes to savings. Right now in a high time of inflation, right now when it comes to uh, people possibly losing some jobs and, and you're, you're kind of concerned, here is a great time to pause paying off debt. I tell people this all the time. It's like, hey, I actually just told my team this. I was like, hey, right now, because times are a little, you know, a little, little, like, uh, we don't know. What we don't want to do is allow fear to operate our future, but we do want to make sure that we're facing reality and that there are certain things happening in the economy and in the world today, and we need to make sure that we're properly prepared. So what I'm telling you is if you was going gun hard on paying off your debt, I'm happy for you. That's great. But I would say maybe slow down a little bit and maybe just build up your savings account so you can have a little cushion. Once you get that savings account built up um, to at least for, let's say for at least two, three thousand dollars so that way you can at least cover your, your mortgage, your rent payment and your mandatory bills for one month if you were to get let go of your job or if something was to happen um, and you had to go off of your job, at least you know you have 30 days to come up with a game plan and you're not stressed for you need money within the next week. Um, and so I'm saying slow down a little bit, put a little bit extra inside your savings account once you get to at least a good three four thousand dollars a month then get back to going aggressive to attacking your debt if you are on the journey of paying off your debt according to recent stats only about half of african americans have some form of estate planning put into place this includes important documents like your wills your trust and your power of attorneys Additionally, only about 60% of all people have life insurance coverage. But why is it so important for not just black people, but all of us to have these things put into place? You see, life insurance can provide financial protection for your loved ones in the event of your unexpected death. It can help cover funeral and burial expenses, uh, pay off debts, and even your mortgages. But here's what I really want you to consider. It can provide income for your loved ones to build wealth with. You see, estate planning, on the other hand, can help ensure that your assets are distributed according to your wishes after your death and that your loved ones are taken care of. If you truly love, and I mean this, if you truly, truly love your loved ones, don't leave their financial security at chance. I want you to get life insurance today. You can get a free quote with my friends over at Ethos by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance or by clicking the link in today's show notes. Protect your family's future and give yourself peace of mind. Don't be in heaven and you're full of joy and your family is here on earth struggling and stressed. Get life insurance today with my friends over at Ethos. Hey, now let's get back to today's show. I know it's a good one. And so you're going to park your three to four thousand dollars inside of one of these accounts. So number one was Capital One. Here's number two, uh, Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Now, this is a, uh, a also FDIC insured their interest rate. I found this one pretty interesting. It's higher than actual Capital One. They're actually offering a 3.75% APY um, and theirs is an online savings account. OK, and this is four times the national average, four times, actually probably probably five times with the national average, again, is at 0.35, right? And so no fees, no minimum deposits, same day transfers of up to $100,000 or less to or from your primary checking account, okay? And so I like that because here's another thing we gotta be looking at if we're going to get the high yielded savings accounts. We have to look at, okay, if I need my emergency fund, can I get it transferred quickly to my checking account? Do 
your emergency funds? Do they come with an actual maybe debit card to where you can get to the ATM and pull out some cash? Now, most savings accounts are not going to come with an actual Visa or a debit card, a Visa or Master uh, logo, so that way you can use it as a um, uh, check card, right? But if you can get it attached to your primary checking account and you can wire the money instantly to your account, that is great. Because remember, a savings account is not an investment account. And an emergency fund is really not a savings account if that makes sense. It's a savings account, but it's an emergency fund savings account. So I have two savings accounts. I have an emergency fund that I will never touch. I would never touch that unless it is an extreme emergency. Then I am already now saving money to eventually build my dream home here within the next couple of years. My goal is right around 40. And so I've been stacking money into that savings account to where, hey, you know what? Let's say, for example, I decide not to build a home. I can go inside that savings account and spend that money on anything else that I desire. But what I cannot do and what I will not do is go into my emergency savings account and use that money to buy other things. And so why not get the most money for this account? I mean, for this emergency fund sitting there, I was letting it sit in my I bank with Truist, formerly known as BBNT and SunTrust. I was banking with them. I think they're a great bank for my business account, for my personal checking account. Great bank, right? Let me know what bank account do you honestly uh, bank with? Some of y'all may bank with local credit unions. That's great. I, I have no problem with that. But Truist is right around the building from my office and from my, my home. So I was like, yo, let me bank with Truist. And I love them. But their savings account wasn't good. And I was like, you know what? Let me move this over there so I can get more money. But also I had to check and make sure that if I move this money over, can I get it back into my savings account, back into my checking account quickly in case of an emergency, right? And so I really do believe, and I really want you all to really understand that, hey, as you're going down this high yielded savings account route, what are some key things you be looking out for? Number one is do they have fees? You want to get what a uh, high yield savings account that doesn't have any fees. Number two, how quickly can you get your money transferred over to your checking account in case of an emergency? Okay, so that's number two. Marcus by Goldman Sachs. We're going to drop their link in all of um, all of these bank accounts inside of today's show notes, so that way you can get quick access to them. All right. So that three point seven five. 3.75, no fees, no minimum deposit, same day transfers of up to $100,000 or less, uh, right, uh, back into your account. That's strong, you guys. That's, that is, that is, that is strong. That is very, very, very strong. Uh, this next one is, um, some of you all may know him. Some of you all may know him because I think some of you all might have um, used them to finance things. Let me say this. Every bank that I'm going to suggest is going to give you the opportunity to finance things. Y'all know where I stand on financing. No, we, we don't we, we don't we don't do debt over here. Um, and so I want I want to want you to be to be wise on how you're doing that. But this next bank is Synchrony. Synchrony finances everything like on Amazon and like um, pay over 60 days. Um, uh, they, they do a lot of financing online for, you know, pay over 30 days, pay over 60 days, Synchrony Bank. Um, and they're offering their APY is 4%. 4% on your money just sitting there. That's some good money. 4%, no minimum balance, no bank fees, with your money just sitting there. Synchrony Bank, 4%. Why is it so important to save money? Study came out recently on Yahoo, Yahoo Finances, that nearly 50% of the people who make $100,000 or more are living paycheck to paycheck. That people who make $100,000 a year can't even afford and a thousand dollar emergency. These are people who are making on average about eight thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars a month, and they can't afford a thousand dollar emergency. 
Now, let me be very sensitive and very, very understanding that I understand that sometimes life does hit. I understand that something, sometimes things come into place that, that had nothing to do with our control. Nothing to do with our control. And sometimes that does happen. And I want to be honest and say, you know what? I understand that. But here is my problem that I do have. That if you're making $100,000 in, in, in your home right now, and you don't have at least $500 in your savings account, respectfully saying this, you can't blame that on the system. You can't blame that on life happening because I'm pretty sure I can look at someone's budget and say, you know what, you can cut that out. The problem is, are we willing to look into the mirror and say, hey, we need to do this and get rid of that for a season? What is the difference between someone who is, who is financially well off and someone who has the capabilities of being financially well off, but they're not? This person who, who is financially well off was willing to sacrifice things for 12 months to change the next 12 years of their life. This person who has the means to do it, they're not willing to do certain things to change it. They don't want to sacrifice 12 months. They don't want to live in a different place that may be uncomfortable for 12 months to get the things they want to do. I drove a, a 2011 Acura TL with 200 something plus thousand miles on it because I knew the kind of life I wanted in the next three years. I was living in a one bedroom apartment in Nashville, Tennessee, actually in Brentwood, Tennessee. When I had the money, I'm making well over six figures. But I was like, no, this is, I know what I want in the future. I know what I want to build. Let me live like this. When I was living in Jacksonville, Florida, I was living in the hood. I wasn't living somewhere real nice, Bay Meadows. I wasn't living on the south side. I was living on the north side. When you pulled on my street, it smelled like crap. As soon as you pulled off, get off the highway. You see dope boys. You see, you know why? It was because I knew the life that I wanted to live, and I knew that I wanted to have a certain amount of money in my savings account. I knew that I wanted to have freedom, and I knew that if I am temporarily willing to sacrifice certain things in the future, I can have every daggone thing that I want. And here's the thing, single people, watch me. Single men, watch me. And I'm going to give you the last two bank accounts. But hear me right now. Single men. Who gives a crap about the kind of car you drive and the kind of house you're living in right now? Because, like, 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 here's what I want to say. Um, um, don't wait till you get your family to where now you got to make those sacrifices. Make the sacrifices when it's just you. So that way you're in a position to when you do get your wife, when you do get your spouse, you don't have to worry about making sacrifices and, baby, we got to do this. Baby, we got to do that. Nah. Now, nah, when your baby come, when your wife come, when your loved one come, when your children come, you ain't got to take them through a lot of sacrifices. I'm able to do the things I'm able to do now because I was willing to sacrifice. I was willing to do certain things. I moved into the, the hood. CJ would tell you, I was living in the hood. I bought a house in the hood. The first day I moved into the house, Older lady came over there and asked me to take her to the corner and go, go get her some weed. Older lady, she got to be 50 years old, knocking on my door, da, 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 and face and mouth on the door. And I'm coming to them like, ma'am, hello? I'm talking about I got my, my protection trained dog. I got my gun on me. Well, every time we go outside and we walk around, you know why? Because I wanted to build wealth. And I knew that if I go buy this home in this particular neighborhood— Right. That is an identified area that I can immediately if I sell this in within a year, two years, that's going to be money. I kept that town home for nine months, made over one hundred thousand dollars when I sold it. What am I saying? What sacrifices are you willing to make to change your financial situation? If you're making one hundred thousand dollars in your family and you're still struggling to paycheck to paycheck, it's not because of the system. It's not because solely because life hit you. I, I guarantee you, if I look at your budget, I could find some places in there that you would hate to say no, because some of y'all make your wants your needs. When really, no, you don't need it. You've just gotten so accustomed to having this thing to where you want it.
And you wonder why you're living where you're living. And you wonder why you don't have $1,000 in your savings account. And you're wondering why you, you don't have this certain kind of thing. It's because it's not because of everyone else. It's that it's you. Couples, time for y'all to sit down, look at yourself in the mirror and say, babe, what do we need to take off of our budget so we can get to where we want to go? Bottom line. And let me be honest with you, it's going to suck. It's going to piss you off to where you can't go on that trip. It's going to suck that you may have to tell your kids you can't do that particular program. I got a family member, um, 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 and this mother um, uh, is, is, you know, she, she can't do the things that she want to do, and she, she, she's living, you know, and she's struggling because one of her kids wants to do a particular activity, and that particular activity costs a whole lot of money. And, and I'm like, yo, listen, the best thing you can do for your kids is tell them no. Because if you are at a place where you're living paycheck to paycheck and you're having to borrow money and max out credit cards just so that your kid can be happy, but then you're stressed, then when they graduate and go off to college, now you're stressed, you're paying back bills, they're in college, and they are living good, and you're trying to catch up on life. And you never catch up because you're so far into debt, you're not making the money, you don't have a savings account, you're not investing into your future, you don't have a 401k, you're not, you don't have anything planned for your future. Now when you turn 60, now you need your kids' help. Huh? The last thing you want to do is be 60 years old and now you are now you are a burden to your kids. What are you gonna say? Why well, I took care of you, it's time for you to take care of me? No, that is the dumbest thing a parent can say. It was your responsibility to take care of your child, but it was also your responsibility to take care of yourself first. How, how do you take care of someone else if you don't have the foundation to take care of yourself? Parents get upset when I say that. Why is that the flight attendant says, hey, before you put the mask onto your kids, put a mask onto yourself, because what good is it for them to be alive and you're dead? If you slip your zone first and immediately get onto them, that's a better situation. Take care of yourself. Breathe. Get a savings account. I know. Comments is going to be upset with me today. That's all right, Michelle. You, Michelle, she'll comment back with y'all. Y'all going to be upset. But I get upset when I read that stat. 100,000 people, people making over 100,000, 125,000, millionaires don't even have $1,000 in their savings account. I get it. Life happens. How long is life going to happen? If you've been living like that for a year, two years, something wrong. Something wrong. Here's the next bank. Basque Bank. Basque Bank. Their APY is 4.35%. And I like Basque Bank. Um... We, we were talking in the past about maybe doing a partnership. And one of the things I love about Bass Bank is that their average rate is about right at 4.35 for the year of, uh, for, for as of March, right? But they're averaging right around like 4.6. And here's what I love um, about Bass Bank is that they're also going to give you airline miles for the money that you do save. That is absolutely amazing. So not only are you getting the interest rate, but then you're getting airline miles to go with the money that you're saving. So per one dollar that you put in there, you're going to get a point to go towards the airline mile. I can't I can't remember the actual bank that they are actually not bank, the actual airline. Um, so I don't want to lie on this video, uh, but we are going to be dropping all their information and all the links below. Uh, they have a no minimum deposit as well, um, and they are FDIC insured, right? And so. I want to encourage you um, to to check out Bass Bank because they're absolutely they're they're a great bank. Um, and eventually down the road, you know, once I find a bank that I really trust and that I can I can uh, support, um, then you know we'll move to just rocking with them. But Bass Bank honestly is one of my favorite banks as a whole around. Like they they that's probably bad grammar. Just um, they're just a full rounded. Is that right? <laughs> Well-rounded. Yeah, full-rounded, well-rounded, you know what I'm saying? You know, they're just a well-rounded bank. 
you know, their checking accounts are great. Uh, their their uh, annual percentages for what they're giving you on their savings account is absolutely great. Um, great customer service. Just a very, very uh, well-rounded, full-rounded um, you name it, whatever you want to say, bank to check out. Uh, to, to, I, I just like them. But where am I parking my money? Such a great question. So I am parking my money at bankpurely.com. Uh, bankpurely.com. Um, and when you go to Bank Purely, I'm actually not utilizing their savings account. They have a high yield savings account. Um, I am using uh, the Purely Money Market account, and I'm getting 4.45% APY. Okay, and so I'm using their Money Market account. So it's, it's, it's like a checking account. It comes with a little bit less. Like you can't have as many transactions on those accounts um, as far as in taking money out. Um, and I absolutely love it. So that's where I just park my money at. I was able to sync uh, bank purely with my bank, Truest Bank. And, and so instantly, within a matter of 24 hours, I can have my money transferred back into my checking account in case of emergency. And then I'm also putting just a little bit more money into there. I told you all that for my emergency fund, I want to have at least six plus figures in there uh, be just because of my life and uh, my lifestyle um, and with me having a business. And so I want to be able to live um, at, at least um, a certain amount of time frame uh, and just be, a, you know, proof that you can save. You guys, I was in debt. You guys, I don't I don't come from I don't come from wealth. I don't. Um, my parents didn't hand me down a hundred thousand dollars at graduation. You know, they didn't give me a million dollars to invest into a company. They didn't. They didn't. My parents didn't even buy me my first car. You know what I'm saying? My parents gave me hard work. They taught me hard, how how to work hard. Um, they taught me how to be a man of of character and man of integrity, um, and that's what I have. And so I racked up thirty five thousand dollars in debt. You know, I was homeless for a season of my life. I made bad. I made a lot of bad decisions in my life, even a lot of bad decisions with my money. Um, I made my wants, my needs. I. I chose spending seven thousand dollars at a strip club on one woman. I've I've bought the cars that I didn't need to buy. Um, I've I've said, hey, I'm gonna go on this trip. I remember one time I spent about fifteen grand on a trip to impress a woman, um, and I've I've made bad decisions. What am I saying? We can all bounce back from those bad decisions. The very first decision that you should be making is. How are you saving? And how are you getting the best bang for your money sitting in the account? And Bank Purely, FDIC insured, comes with a mobile app, no fees. In this particular account, on a money market account, you do have to have a certain amount of money, right? You do got to have a certain amount of money to um, get the full 4.45% APY. And so this is the bank that I say, if you have over $20,000 in your savings account, $25,000 in your savings account, move this money over here so you can get a 0.15% more on your money. But if you only have a thousand, then the number one bank, in my personal opinion for that, will be uh, Basque Bank. Uh, so check them out. But if you have more than $20,000 for my people who follow me, um, and I've learned, man, we have a lot of people who follow me who make over half a million to a million dollars. And you all are doing very well off. And I love that. This is a great bank for you to check out. Uh, because I told you, all, I put $25,000 in the account in a matter of uh, 20 days. They gave me $80. So now I'm going to move $75,000 over there. I actually already did it. So that's going to be six figures to sit in this account. So this means if we do the math right, so we're looking at about close to what, about $100. About about two hundred two hundred dollars a month, uh, two hundred twenty twenty five dollars maybe a month that I'm going to get from my money just sitting in that account. That's almost three thousand dollars a year for my money just sitting in the account. I want you to think about that. I had seventy five thousand dollars sitting inside of my savings account at Truist. That made me eight dollars and five cents. I had twenty five thousand dollars sitting in my bank purely money market account. That made me right at about. $80. $25,000 made me $80. $75,000 made me $8.
just sitting there. Your money is already sitting there. This is not a way to make more money. Hear me clearly. This is not a way to make more money, but with inflation going up, why not get some inflation on your money just sitting there for emergencies? This can help you hit your, your emergency goal quicker. So why not get the free money if it's just sitting there? This is not investment. You're not trying to get rich. This is, if my money's gonna sit there for a year anyways, for six months anyways, why not get the most bang for your buck? So, again, we're gonna link these all below. You got Capital One at 3.4%. You have Marcus by Goldman Sachs at 3.75%. You have Synchrony at uh, 4%. You have Basque Bank at 4.35%. Uh, then you have Bank Purely at 4.45% with their money market account. I hope that you all would take advantage of this. I'm not getting paid. None of these banks are paying me at all to promote them to, to do this. But I was sitting there thinking, people have been asking me like, hey, what are the best banks to, uh, to part my emergency fund in or to part my savings account in? I think right now those are the top five. If you have another five that, uh, or another one that you've been using and the APY is good, great. Let me know. I, I've been looking for something to have 5%. That's FDIC insured. Keep in mind, too, that interest rates do fluctuate, you guys. They do fluctuate. So you need to always be looking. But here's the thing, too. Let's say, for an example, a uh, bank purely goes from 4.45 down to 4.15, but Basque Bank is giving 4.35. I'm not going to move all my money over to Basque Bank to, go, to get 4.35. I'm going to keep it there because interest rates fluctuate. So it could be 4.15. Um, by July, but then it may go up to 4.75 in September. So it's like you you got to gauge where uh, you want to be. And once you choose one, stick with them for a year and just see what you get. Then from there, watch this, uh, you go back and reassess. Like, okay, what bank is offering the best and what has their annual been on average? And then if it's beating where you are right now, then transition over to it. And I think that's perfectly fine. But I want you, if you have your money sitting in your account right now and you're only getting 0.35%, move your money over right now to one of these banks. Um, anywhere between three and a quarter and higher is where you need to be parking your money. Anything less than three and a quarter right now, don't do it. Don't, do not do it. 2%, don't do it. You need to be at three and a quarter and higher um, right now, let's get the best bang for our buck so that way we can get a bit more money in our savings account so we can reach our money goals quickly. And the last thing I want to say this, for those of you all who are who, who are exceeding and you're making that money, make sure you only put money into the account that is FDIC insured. If it's not insured, do not put the money in that account unless you have no problem losing that money. <laughs> and I don't know about y'all, I ain't trying to lose none of my money right now. So these are the top five accounts. Love you all. And, and, and I'm sorry if I offended anyone. I'm sorry, but not sorry. You know, I love you all. And I just got to be real with you. I have to let you know, like, hey, if you are making this kind of money and you're saying you can't even keep $500, $1,000 in your savings account, the problem is partially, actually, the majority of the problem is you. You got to keep rocking with me. Because I want to help you get out of that problem. I'll see you in the next show. Peace out.